from the highest point in Santorini, welcome to the GCN Show. Hello and welcome to the GCN Show. Yeah, this week we learned that Tom Pidcock is an absolute machine and Jay Vine has shown us that you can go from riding in your bedroom to winning a Grand Tour stage. Number plates are not going to be on bikes and Connor loves to lie down during his bike rides. I do indeed, especially when there's a bag of gummy bears on hand. Mm. We're going to be discussing though why cyclists love to suffer on this week's GCN Show mm. and Hank is going to reveal what on earth propels him to do some of the craziest challenges possible? Oh, are we going to reveal all that? Yep, yeah, he's going to reveal all. Yes, and, um, well, I had a haircut. <laughs> this week on the GCN Show, we talk about pain. After watching Connor's attempt at finishing the Tour de Station on the channel this Sunday, it got us thinking, why do we love the pain so much. Are we road cyclists or masochists mm. or do we learn to enjoy the suffering as we progress through the sport? Or perhaps do we all enjoy different ways to suffer on the bike? By the way, Hank, mm. you definitely, I think, more than anyone, love the pain. Just You just love it, don't you? All the crazy stuff you've taken on on the, on the channel is testing yeah, to that. I have to say that is true, but I still loved watching your effort on Tour de Stasio. I'm not sure right. we've ever seen you that broken, I guess, since you fell asleep at the Donegal 555. Nice but day. if you haven't seen Tour de Stasio, and you've got to go watch it, it is an absolutely amazing video. And what an epic ride too. What a place! 250 kilometers covered, wireless riding up to the top of Mount Everest. Thanks Hank. I think that leads into our first point nicely though. Many of us, I think myself included at times, only like suffering if it allows us to ride on those jaw dropping roads. The bike is a vehicle after mm. all and you've got to put the effort in to get where you want to go and getting up those long Swiss mountain roads takes a bit of effort. So whilst I was crucified on the bike, I loved it because I kept getting rewarded with another stunning view around every corner. Yeah. That view right next to the recycling bin. Okay, I got your point. And I think me though, I enjoy the suffering on my bike because of the reward afterwards. Look, here, okay? The harder the challenge and the tougher the event, the greater the feeling of completion is. Suffering makes you stronger, it makes you more resilient, and in my mind, it helps build you as a person. What about those who don't like to suffer though? Because we don't all like to put ourselves through the pain barrier. There isn't anything wrong with that either. I definitely fall into this boat at times. Bike riding isn't all about putting yourself in the pain cave after all, mm. and it isn't always brutally hard either. Many of us like to just ride along and take it easy. I know you may not understand this sort of language, Hank, no. but riding bikes is 100% still fun when you're not going full gas everywhere. No, I get that. I can ride easy at the end of a 100 mile ride. Point proven. Yeah. What? Sometimes I think suffering on the bike, it's all about pushing yourself to places that you wouldn't normally go to and discovering new aspects of yourself that you didn't believe ever existed. That can be quite an addictive thrill too. So whilst it may hurt and putting myself through that ride in stations through the Swiss Alps was brutal, I'd, I'd do it again. Would you? I would, yeah. It's just a lot of fun pushing yourself beyond your limits and seeing what might happen. He'd do it again, people! <laughs> yeah, make sure we have that clip saved in the GCN Megabase for the future. Right, are we going to enter him again into next year's event? Well, I did ask everyone who should do it next year, and judging from the comments, you're the man for that ride. So, um, better start training. Well, to be honest, mate, I could beat Ollie's time. Oh, bold claims. There we are. Different types of pain on the bike too, though, isn't there? You have that long endurance effort where it becomes more of a mental battle than anything else, and you push your mind in the way Connor just described. Then you also have that short, sharp, intense effort that hurts like hell at the time, but you feel great and super good when it's over. Yeah, like an instant whack of endorphins. Mm. I remember that effort at the Vuelta well though. Massive line Are outs. You in the Vuelta? Sprinted, I did maybe mention that. Yeah. Sprinted through those hot Spanish roads um, and each pedal stroke felt like it would be my last, but I don't remember the hit of endorphins, just another effort to contend with <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, I think this is the sort of pain which attracts the time trialists, isn't it? That short, sharp, intense effort, riding in a position that, let's face it, is super uncomfortable. Um, but time trialing is almost a sport in itself, and it's quite a unique scene. If you love it, you've got to love putting the pain threshold to maximum and seeing how long you can kind of hold it there. I think the extreme of that has got to be hill climbers. Yeah. If time trialing was a 10 out of 10 effort, 
Hill climbing has got to be 11 out of 10, the shortest effort of the lot, no easy riding whatsoever, just out of the saddle, pedal to the metal, they don't even know if they'll last to the finish. It's the hit and hope of cycling, but people love it. Conquering climbs in the purest way possible and coming back for more. There's a good point, I'm definitely not a hill climber. If hill climbers are the extreme of short, sharp efforts, Mark Beaumont must be the extreme of the long, long efforts. Just riding all the time, non-stop, 17 hours a day for 80 days, kind of stuff. I mean, that pain is addictive, right? It must be because he keeps coming back for more. The latest being an attempt at RAM with Jonathan Schubert, the results of which will be available to watch on ZCM Plus very soon in the latest documentary. The man is made. He's strong stuff. Strong isn't he? stuff. Yeah, we can't forget to mention Manon either, though, completing right. her longest ride at Steamboat Gravel after being pretty nervous beforehand. Cracking effort, too. <laughs> so I, well, I think did. Manon is the sort of rider who just doesn't feel pain. She rides on regardless and doesn't whinge or cry about it, yeah, like me. The Welsh Terminator. The Welsh Terminator. Yeah, maybe Welsh cakes are the secret ride fuel. Let's not, not tell her. Um, nah. Anyway, either way, let us know in the comment section below why you love to suffer, suffer on the bike, what like motivates suffer. you to push through the pain, and what is it that keeps us coming back for more, take on these super hard, tough efforts. That's going to be interesting in that comment section below. And now it's time for cycling shorts. We're going to kick off for cycling shorts with news that there are no plans to make number plates and insurance compulsory for cyclists. This was all confirmed by the Politics Home column by the co-chair to the all-party parliamentary cycling walking group. Now this is coming off the back of last week's show that you did with Manon, um, talking about governments and they're thinking about putting license plates and making you know insurance compulsory. You're a frequent visitor to the Politics Home column by the co-chair to the all-party parliamentary cycling walking group aren't you? Big well remembered, buddy. Up, right? Yeah. <laughs> Either way, after hearing mixed views out in part, and a lot of you getting in touch in the comments on the last week's show, I think from a cyclist point of view, this is good news. I have to agree. I think government should be encouraging support and supporting cycling and focus on all those great benefits, right? Yeah, agreed. Yeah, in other news though, Rafa launched their Women's 100 Limited Edition kit. Artist Susanna Rogatti and Studio Nari collaborated with Rafa to release a new kit design for the upcoming Women's 100 Ride this September. We are used to seeing bold designs mm. coming out of Rafa, especially with their collaborations with Palace, but I feel these designs are slightly more subtle with mm. a nice pastel colour to them and those designs carrying an underlying message of women's empowerment, something we are totally behind. Yeah, 100%. And being this is the 10th anniversary of the Women's 100 Rafa has... Women's 100? Rafa has set the goal of getting 100,000 women to ride 100 kilometers on Sunday, the 18th of September. You don't need the kit to join, all you have to do is sign up to Strava to be a part of what's going to be a great ride. More great news for women cycling, yes. love it. I also love the result from the Vuelta Espana's first summit finish last week. Jay Vine romped to victory, going from virtual to reality. You re may remember that he won the 2020 Zwift Academy, which earned him a spot on Alpes in Phoenix Pro Team that season. Yeah, from there he has gone from strength to strength and has now won his first Grand Tour at just the age of 27. What a ride, Jay. Just goes to show that if you really want to, you can go from having fun in your bedroom, riding on Zwift, to winning a stage of mm. one of the hardest races in pro cycling. Congratulations, Jay. What a ride. Yeah, I really hope you're still having fun in your bedroom. Uh, anyway. Moving swiftly on. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. It hasn't all been plain sailing for home fitness brands. Peloton, their shares fell again by a whopping 20% after it was announced they made a loss for the sixth quarter in a row. A $1.2 billion loss too. Troubling times for Peloton, a company which did soar in popularity during the COVID lockdowns. Yeah, it is. It does seem like the ultimate New Year's Eve resolution. Get a Peloton, in a way, and then everyone kind of gives up simultaneously, don't yeah. they? Anyway, we hope to get some better news. Too. Well, they need some of Tom Pidcock's luck, if you can call it that, or maybe just extreme talent. The 23-year-old continued to win at pretty much anything two-wheeled last week. The young British superstar is fresh from a successful Tour de France, which saw him net arguably the Queen stage on our so. so some ride that descent down into it as well. Mm. He's now, though, jumped straight back onto his mountain bike, winning the European Cross Country Championship. He even crashed on the first lap of five, jumped back up and then soloed to victory on the last three. I mean, what a man. Incredible ride, that. It's now time for Hack 
Forward slash bod. Side does it this way. Huh? It's definitely the other way. Okay. You know it's the other way. Alright, one more time. It's now time for hack. Forward slash bodge, bodge of the week. Yep, you guys submit your brilliant hack or bodges to the GCN app, and we here decide if it is a hack or a bodge. Right, kicking First up. off with one from Ryan Kenner. I built this mini trainer for my son from a few scraps of wood and some screws I had lying about. Love it. I've got to say, this is genius. Brilliant, I really love that. That's a 100% hack for me. I'm going home and I'm gonna try and make one of those for my son. Right, and yeah. then I think you should because it gets them riding, doesn't it? Like gets you can train on Zwift and, and Jesse could ride next to you. And they don't just disappear off because blinking of an eye and they're gone. And you could almost wear them out a little bit. Exactly, so right, what's early next? bedtime, bike ride, brilliant. That's a hack. Hack from me. Nice one. Next submission from DS Mac. Maybe not the sexiest hack, but I bet some people use the idea in pursuit of an organised bike cave. IKEA poly bag holder makes a convenient spot for all those punctured tubes awaiting repair that previously hung all over the place. I do quite like this, and I, it is a hack for me because I, I tend to have you know loose tyres and loose inner tubes just everywhere, and it just makes everywhere messy. Well, I'm going to counter that because I'm going for a bodge because what? chaos theory. All of those inner tubes in there, imagine trying to get one out. You'd never get one out. It'll yeah. all be tangled up together. No, you could easily get one out. That's chaos theory. You just, you don't, there's no kind of explanation for it, but that'll be a knot, a tangle <laughs> of knots. No, it's a hack from me. So it's a bodge from me. It's We're a hack undecided. From me. Let us know in the comment section below what you think. Right, next up, we've got one from Nam Rikekeb. Is that you, you got that? Yeah. Carbon fibre soles are great for powerful transfer, but if I miss slipping in and put the weight down on my foot, I frequently slide off the pedal entirely. Solution, custom fit, texturized, thin rubber sheet glued to the inset on the sole means that no more slipping off the pedal, which I think is quite a smart idea. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good idea. I, and you um... also damage your shoes. At the bottom, because you, you, you know you, it hits your your pedal on the uh, on, on that carbon sole. So this I is allowing you to to you know ease of clipping in. I'm finding it hard to relate because I don't think I've had this problem before. But I think because my feet are so big, it's virtually impossible for me to lose the pedal. Mate, your shoes are like boats. You're going to have this issue because it's such a small point of where you've got to you know find. Yeah, but find, the, find the, the point's cleat. small. But the shoe's about as long as your forearm. Literally as long as your forearm, my foot. So what are you going to say? It's a tiny little forearm, Aaron Cass here. <laughs> what are you going to say? I'll go hat because it's protecting the shoes. Thank you. Hack it is. Hack it is. Moving on to Tom Ernest Berger. I wanted to fit my Garmin to my ARC8 with the original stem, but the cable routing didn't allow for it with the mount I chose. So I handmade an adapter to fit in between and adjust the angle of the Garmin so it's nice and nimble. This is, this is classic. I think we've seen quite a few of these on the show before, which is homemade or 3D printed um, bike computer mounts. And um, I've got to say, a nice carbon one like this, it's sleek, it's clean, it's, it, well, it does the job. This is a yeah. clear hack. Definitely hack. a few nice hacks, haven't we, this, this week? Yeah, and it, I'm, I'm of your ilk, because if I do see my, my head units off a bit, it drives me mad. It does. It does drive me mad. It's the I little have things. Had I've had that one when it's bouncing around on one. Oh, You're, he's always bouncing around the place. <laughs> right, Moving we've got on. one in uh, from uh, Jeffrey Tal. Now, I've actually had this same problem when you've got so many medals, you just don't know where to put them. Definitely they not. almost weigh you down. Literally, I've had this exact problem. Anyway, a very easy way to display your medals. I used a bottle cage, uh, I used a bottle cage attached securely to the wall and then hung a spare 700C rim. My wife and I uh, each have one of them. Uh, for cycling and running medals. And yeah, idea, it's actually. basically a medal hanger. It's brilliant. It's I've got to say I mean, that there's a lot of Repurposed there. wheel. I'd like to try it myself, but I think it would just be the wheel on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> An empty wheel. There may be which, a bit of which, tumble wheel with which, weed. Which could be art in itself. That could be art. Let me know in the comment section below. What yeah. you, uh, I think this is another hack. What do you think? I, I feel like we've had all hacks this week. Yeah, it's a hack. I mean, I, I went for the bodge, didn't I? Yeah. The, so one bodge my chaos and the rest hacks. Hacks. Hanks. Hanks. Well done, Hanks. everyone. Hanks. That's uh, that's sent in your hacking bodges. We look forward to going through the next 
Yeah, so, yeah. Few. and make sure you upload your own to the GCN app, and you might have a chance that it will be crowned a Hank's hack. A Hank's hack. It's that time. Caption competition. Yeah. This is the moment of the show where we give you a picture and you put in the comment section below the best caption you could possibly think of. And if we pick yours, then you get GCN Elite Water Bottle winging its way all the way to you. Now, last week we gave you this picture of Theo. Now, uh, he was kind of looking at his uh, bike computer. You did a, a rather dejected. rubbish. Pretty rubbish. Rather rubbish caption. As always. As always. And uh, TWP crew or Q came with this one. The feeling when you see the profile and elevation of the day's mountain stage. Good and work. I feel like nice you work. had that same look when you looked at the Tour de Stations. I did. I probably had the same look when I looked at every single race I ever did. <laughs> oh really? It's just it's just one of these. Oh no, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. No, I, I, love, hear you. I love it really, and Teo's loving it really too because he's in a great position on GC at the moment. He's, he's absolutely doing, flying it. He is doing rather well. Nice work. So, well done. TWP, you get this sent to you at home. Right. Nice way to you. This week, we're going to give you what photo there have you got, Connor? Oh, this is Marco Haller, who uh, had a great win actually over in Germany at the Bremer Classic. And he's got a rather big glass of beer. That is a, that's a big one. That'd be a normal pint for me in my hand. It, it would be. Have you got a caption that you can share with us? Right, I'm thinking. I've got a flower on my cheek. <laughs> that's all I can think of. I've got a flower on my cheek. I've got a flower on my cheek. Now we need to pause for a second. Pause, quick cut. Let's uh, just have some, some brainstorming, me and Hank. What about? We, we do have a brain. Mm. This is a proper recovery treat. <laughs> <laughs> or what about what about my moustache? Oh no no, mate, I've, I've got, got a, I've got I, a flower. I, I've got to stick my moustache back on. You know, like when you when you press your moustache. Your moustache. Yeah, like cowboys. Yeah. Um, All my moustache is flipping off like that. All my moustache is coming off. What about something to do with frankfurters? Go on, what's that? You could do with a good frankfurter now. <laughs> Anyway, if you can come up with a better caption that we can't, let us know in the comment section below and uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be in with a chance of winning a GCN Elite water bottle. I always go, oh, why didn't I think of that? So I, do I. I think the GCN audience are cleverer than us. Good luck, everyone. Not hard. Let's move on. Swiftly. Swiftly. It's now time for comment of the week. Now this is the time of the show where we get to have a look through all of the comments that you guys have left under our videos and pick out some of the best, starting with a video I did actually with Alex on how to ride in a group. Now we've had a load of good comments. Uh, End Censorship came out with, riding in a group is the essence of cycling. Riding solo is cool, and for some of us, it's all we can do, but very few things compared to being in a group and flying along. Everything about it, the whir of the bikes, the way the, the air flows over and around you, the speed is a special feeling that got me hooked on this crazy sport all of 40 years ago. Wow, what a great way to put it, and uh, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I, I agree with it even more, actually, when I'm sitting on the back of the group. It's, <laughs> even, it's even better. Yeah. But no, thanks for sending that one in. Next one, been sent in by possibly the best name I've ever read out on the GCN show, Dibble Schisser. Love it. Good one. Empathy helps with riding along properly. And then Robert Downs had another one under that video. Everybody does the climb in their preferred tempo, and at the top, we wait for everyone. That's how we do it. Um, that's also how we do it with um, with, with with Connor. We wait for him. Thankfully. Yeah. Have we got any more? You have to wait for me because I'm always the one buying the coffees. Anyway, we we, we need to move on. Strength training for beginners. Um, this one was with you, wasn't it, mate? Yep, yeah, there's some brilliant comments sent in. Susan Atai, that's great. I would like more of these strength training videos if possible. Or well, Hank has uh, volunteered to do uh, to do plenty of press ups. <laughs> oh God, God. Well, I'm going to wait after this show to see if you can do a press up. Last week's GCN show, we had this one sent in by Michael Ganshert. The issue of number plates for bicycles sounds like a solution looking for a problem. That mm. is very true. I think it's just one of those things where you're just making things a bit more difficult than it needs to be. It's not really necessary, yeah. it's just bureaucracy gone mad. Rep Rob Bob Penny on that show. I'm happy to have a numb plate that sticks out by a minimum of 1.5 meters. At least it will reduce the chance of dangerous close passes. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah, right. What's coming up on this week's uh, videos then? Coming up Connor? on the channel this week on Wednesday, we have How to Get Fitter by Bike. 
Yeah, on Thursday, five commuter train tips where I show you guys how to get fit while commuting. Then on uh, Friday, Alex shares his road to recovery, how to get back to riding your bike after a serious injury. Yeah, and on Saturday, I've got a special one for you. We put a bodybuilder through a test. Can a bodybuilder ride a bike? And then on Sunday, we have what happens when a beginner rides 30 miles. Now, this is with Harriet, who you may have seen, who rode a superbike for the, for the first time. Um, and it was a brilliant video. I loved her approach and her attitude yeah. to cycling. It was, it was great to see. And this time we sent her off to ride 30 miles. See how yeah. she gets on. Manon takes her on a spin. Right, that's the end of this week's GCN show. If you've enjoyed it, let us know in that comments section below. And don't forget to give Connor and I a big thumbs up. Do we deserve it? I hope so. Yeah, me too. Should we have a press up off now? Yeah. Do you want to do it on the table? Yeah. I'm not sure it'll take my weight. Will you fit? Go on, let's that's try. That as well. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try it. There's first for everything. Oh, do you want me to do it first? Keep rolling, cameraman. <clears throat> right, how many press-ups can I do? Yeah. Are you sure this thing's stable? Yeah, go on. I'm go not, on. I'm not entirely go convinced. Go on. Go on. This is another thing I'm getting for go on. In, in trouble for at GCN HQ. Go on. <laughs> one. <laughs> one. <laughs> Woo! And again. Oh, again. That's it, that's it. I, feel, oh. I feel alive. Yeah. I feel alive. See you in the next show.